the kavana of marriage, aside from uh, revu, the kavana of marriage is v'hoyu l'boser echad. Now Rashi says v'hoyu l'boser echad in the child. When two people make one baby, so two are becoming one. But the v'hoyu l'boser echad applies even if, for whatever reason, there are no children. Because getting married is a mitzvah in itself. So what does it mean, v'hoyu l'boser echad? There's a certain kind of a bond that only marriage produces. In some way, when you're married, you are more related, whatever that means, you're more family with your wife than you are with your mother. How is that possible? I don't know. What does that? Hmm? What does that, the marriage? A, a mother and a child are very close, very... It doesn't say any place that they are Basar Echad. So if you separate from your mother, it's sad. Separate from a wife is like an amputation. In fact, it's Samach Tzedek, when the Rebetzin passed away, Tzemach Tzedek said to his sons, you lost a mother. But a mother is a mother from Vait Naseich. So she's still your mother. No, she, so she's far away. But she's still your mother. But a wife from far away. So it's an amputation. So listen to it. He is, the Tzemach Tzedek is saying, the loss of a wife is more painful than the loss of a mother. Okay, because the mother you didn't really lose, she's still your mother. Not a, not a terribly great Nechama. How does that Basar Echad. How does that happen? Practically, you live together year after year. You share a life. You have the same pains and you have the same pleasures and you have the same worries and the same... You merge. You merge. In other words, time and experience meld you together. But really, the Basar Echad begins under the Chuppah. As soon as you say Harayat Mikudeshas, that's it. It's Basar Echad, and to separate would be an amputation. Now, Sharansky in Russia was arrested during his Sheva Brachas. And his wife ran around for nine years trying to get him freed. You would think she would say, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm not his wife. I'm a Sheva Brachas. I barely know the guy. And he's in jail. So too bad. I'm not going to hang around for this. What, what do I need this for? They took him away. I may never see him again. I'm finished. I'll go get married with somebody else. So it's not that they lived together for many years and they became close. No. It was in the middle of Sheva Brachas. And yet, her husband was sitting in jail. So for nine years she ran around asking people to save her husband. That's, 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 that, that's marriage, not something special.
So what does that? The fact that you choose each other, not like a mother and a child. Maybe even the fact that there is such a thing as divorce. Does that make the relationship weaker or stronger? That's why Apichsidus, the Ava of an Ava and a Ben, is not as great as the Ata Bechartanu. Ata Bechartanu is much higher than uh, Avinu Malkeinu. Dafke because Bechire is, is Bechire Chavshis. We're not automatically related. And yet I choose you. That is deeper than, than Avon Ben. So why aren't all marriages wonderful? What, what weakens, damages the relationship is, in the most part, getting too comfortable. You get so comfortable with each other, you get so used to each other, that you start uh, hurting each other in tiny little ways that you don't even notice. But over time, it becomes abusive. Imagine after a year of being married, your wife says, so, do you, so what are we going to do about this? And you say, whatever, okay? That is so abusive. It's like, will you stop bothering me? If you ever say that to your wife. I think the punishment is Malchus. <laughs> <laughs> You, you listen, listen you, you hear people, husbands and wives talking, and, and, and you hear that tone. All right, leave me alone already. That, that is the worst thing you can say. You can have a disagreement. You can, you can argue intensely about something. No, it's not true, there's no life on Mars. Argue all you want and disagree. Say, you don't know what you're talking about. You've never been to Mars. <laughs> that's, not, that's not as bad as saying, whatever, leave me alone. Leave me alone? Did you just ask for a divorce? Because that's what it sounds like. Ah, not a permanent divorce. For the rest of the day, can you leave me alone? Never, never, never. That tone, it's not even what you say, it's that um, you're annoying me. Never. And where does that come from? It comes from being too, too familiar. <laughs> one, one guy actually said to me, why do I have to be nice to her? We're married already. He actually thought that. You're nice to somebody to get them to marry you. Once they marry you, you don't have to be nice. We're married. There really, there's a serious, we're married, so if I hurt your feelings, what are you going to do? You live in my house. You're going to have to come home, so, so I hurt your feelings. So what's the big deal? This is like the worst. <laughs> this is like every kosher restaurant. So there was a bug in your soup. So what are you going to do? Go eat today? <laughs> you have to come back and eat my soup again anyway, so who cares? 
I, I, you know, I got you, you know, you're stuck with me. You're, a, so I don't have to be nice to you anymore. And the same, same is true with the yeshivas. You don't like it? Send your kid to public school. Ah, you can't, eh? Okay, so uh, put up with me. Everybody's like that. It's terrible. You forget that there's another life. What are you, what are you trying to keep up? What, you, what type of stand? Which kind of conversation goes on? Yeah. The same way you talk to her today. You think before you say something. You say it politely. You say it respectfully, considerately. And then as soon as you walk out of the chuppah, it's like, go sit over there. What happened? What happened to your tone? What are you talking? You're talking to your trained dog? You ever hear a guy say to his wife, come over here. Come over here? Who talks like that? <coughs> Who are you talking to? Every guy who runs a business talks nicer to his customer than to his wife. Or if he's an employee, he talks much nicer to his employer than to his wife. Because he doesn't want to lose his job. Losing your job is not an amputation. Losing your wife is an amputation. So maintain the right tone. Don't lose that. It shouldn't be obvious to everyone in the room that you're already married more than five years. And you're starting to sound like it. A husband and wife are at, at a, at a l'chaim. And the wife says, it's getting late. You should go home. The husband says, you want to go home? Take the car, go home. Leave me alone. They didn't just get married. This is the damage that comes from being married for many years. <laughs> you don't talk like that. So you know how you listen to a telephone conversation you're hearing only one side of it and you know who the, who's on the other side because of the tone you know immediately whether someone is talking to his father or to his child it's a different tone saying exactly the same words meet me at seven o'clock same words meet me at seven o'clock and you know whether he's talking to his father or to his son and if you don't know this guy is bad if if he talks the same to his the same tone to his father and to his son it's not acceptable it has to be a different tone yeah that's the tone I have to take music lessons. <laughs> but you watch a guy sitting in his store and he's screaming and arguing with somebody and the phone rings. And he's in the middle of shouting, his mouth is, is foaming at the mouth. Hello. <laughs> he knows he has to change his tone. So you're sitting with somebody in his office and the phone rings and he picks it up and he says, yeah, you know, he's talking to his wife. <laughs> and it's terrible. Because he would never talk to a customer like that. Just the, yeah. Who do you talk to like that? And you think your wife doesn't realize? 